Hey everyone, I'm Chris from Geeky Medics. In this video, I'm going to discuss breaking bad news using the Spikes framework. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to be the first to know about our latest videos. Let's get started. So why is this such an important topic? Well, knowing how to break bad news well is an essential skill, both for OSCEs and in clinical practice. Breaking bad news stations commonly appear in OSCE examinations. Bad or distressing news is never easy to hear, but having someone deliver the news well can make all the difference. So what exactly do we mean by the term bad news? A common definition of bad news is any news that adversely and seriously affects an individual's view of their future. It's important to remember that breaking bad news is not only done in the context of giving a cancer diagnosis. The badness of the news may depend on the patient's individual circumstances, and it's important to consider how the news will impact on the patient and their life. Just to give you an example, lorry drivers in the United Kingdom are subject to strict driving rules. A lorry driver who has had a transient ischemic attack, for example, would be required to stop driving for at least a year. This would have a significant impact on their life and may lead to them losing their job. Before we move on to discussing how to break bad news, I think it's worth us reflecting on why breaking bad news can be so difficult. Delivering bad news is a stressful experience for clinicians and it requires advanced communication skills. Without adequate training, we can feel underprepared to break bad news. I've listed some of the common fears people have here, for example worrying about how the patient will react to the news, or being unable to answer their questions. These fears will subside as you gain experience and training in breaking bad news, however I don't think that they ever truly go away. Let's move on now and think about the SPIKES framework for breaking bad news. So SPIKES is a framework to help us break bad news. There are six stages to SPIKES. Setting, perception, invitation, knowledge, emotions and empathy, strategy and summary. It's important to point out that Spikes is not a script. Instead, it's a framework to help us structure our consultation and deliver bad news well. We're going to look at each stage of Spikes in a little more detail. So the first stage in Spikes is setting up the consultation. It's important to consider the physical setting where the news will be delivered. Ideally, the discussion should occur in a comfortable, quiet and private room. Ensure you are uninterrupted, for example, switching off your phone or pager. Bad news should never be broken in a busy hospital corridor with constant interruptions. It may be helpful to have other people present, for example, other healthcare professionals, such as a specialist nurse or one of the ward nurses. You should ask the patient if they wish for any friends or family to be present for the discussion. It's important to prepare for delivering the bad news. You should familiarise yourself with the patient's history, including any relevant test results and ongoing management. This will help you answer any questions they may have. Finally, as always, you should introduce yourself, including your name and role. The next step in Spikes is establishing the patient's perception. Now this is really important to do, especially before you deliver the bad news. You need to find out what the patient already knows or is expecting. The patient may or may not be aware of the possible diagnoses or that bad news may be coming. Establishing the patient's perception enables you to tailor the discussion depending on their existing knowledge and understanding of the situation. Some questions you could ask include, what have you been told about this so far? Or, are you worried that this may be serious? You may well find that there is a mismatch between the patient's understanding of the situation and the medical reality. And if you establish this early in the consultation, it will help you when you go on to deliver the bad news. Once we've established the patient perspective, the next stage in Spikes is invitation. This involves obtaining permission from the patient to deliver the news, for example, the results of a recent scan. Although most patients will want to know all of the details, you should not assume this. 
This also gives an opportunity to give a warning shot, to warn the patient that bad news is coming. For example, you could say, I have the results of your scan. Unfortunately, the results were not as we had hoped. Would you like me to explain them to you now? Another challenge is finding out the level of detail the patient wishes to know about the news being delivered. One question you can ask is, are you the sort of person who likes to know exactly what's going on? This will help you gauge the level of information to provide for the patient. So just to recap, so far in the SPIKES model, we have set up the consultation, established the patient's perception, and obtained the patient's invitation to proceed in delivering the news. The next stage is giving the knowledge and information to the patient. Now the key to doing this is delivering information in small chunks and regularly checking the patient's understanding. You should use patient-friendly language and try to avoid using complex medical terminology. Here, the use of silence is vital, although this can feel very uncomfortable. Give the patient time to digest the information they are being given and always avoid interrupting the patient. If you haven't done so already, it's important to give a warning shot to the patient before you deliver the bad news. This gives them a moment to psychologically prepare before the news is delivered. You should make sure that your tone is respectful, at a slow pace and clear. It is very natural for the patient to have an emotional reaction at this stage. They may go quiet, ask questions in disbelief, deny that this is happening, start crying or become angry. These are all normal reactions to hearing bad news and each individual will respond in their own way. It's really important to give the patient time to have their emotional reaction. Once again, it can feel very uncomfortable just watching patients like this, but you should give them the space to react to the news. So how do we respond to these emotions? Well, this is the next stage in the SPIKES model. We should recognise and respond to the patient's emotions with empathy and concern. Acknowledge their emotions and body language. For example, you could say, I can see this is a huge shock for you. Or... I can see this is not the news we're expecting. I'm so sorry. However, do not give false hope or reassurance when responding to the patient's emotions. It can sometimes be tempting to downplay the severity of the situation or to withhold some vital pieces of information. However, this is only going to cause problems in the longer term. The last stage in spikes is strategy and summary. You should check the patient's understanding of the situation Involve the patient in agreeing the next steps, such as further investigations or starting treatment. Agree an appropriate follow-up plan and ensure the patient knows what will happen next. You should offer ongoing assistance, for example, from a specialist nurse, and also provide written information if it is appropriate to do so. Finally, answer any questions from the patient and their family before bringing the consultation to a close. I hope that overview of Spikes was useful. Spikes is an excellent tool to help you structure your consultation when breaking bad news. I just want to touch on some of the key communication skills which are especially important in these situations. It's vital to display active listening skills, such as maintaining appropriate eye contact and open body language. Don't use euphemisms. For example, if the diagnosis is cancer, use the word cancer. It's also important to avoid using medical jargon. Sometimes as clinicians, we hide behind medical language, which is unfair for patients. As always, you may not know all of the answers, but this is okay. Be clear on the limitations of your knowledge and do not give false hope. As I mentioned at the start of this video, breaking bad news can be a stressful experience. Delivering this type of news is emotionally challenging especially if you've built up a rapport with the patient. You should reflect on your own thoughts and feelings, and you may find it useful to discuss these situations with senior colleagues and mentors. I vividly remember my first experiences of breaking bad news on the wards, and I think it's really important we recognise the stress these experiences can cause us as clinicians. 
So far, we have discussed how spikes can be used in breaking bad news scenarios. However, spikes can be used outside of these situations. The spike structure can be applied to any situation where you need to share information with a patient, such as explaining a condition, investigation or treatment option. For example, explaining a diagnosis of hypertension or how to use an adrenaline auto-injector. Many elements of spikes are relevant for these situations and using spikes will help you structure your consultation effectively. Information giving stations also frequently appear in OSCEs, so this is a good skill to master. So just to illustrate this, here's an example of how we could use the spike structure when explaining a diagnosis of hypertension. So if we move through spikes, we start off with setting. So this involves preparing for the consultation, gathering information on the patient, such as their comorbidities, blood pressure readings, etc. We may want to establish whether the patient would like anyone with them during the consultation. We then move on to establish the patient's perception. What do they understand by what's going on? So for example, you could say something like, we're discussing your blood pressure readings today. What have you been told about this so far? We then move on and obtain the patient's invitation to proceed with the discussion. We could say something like, would you like me to go through the readings with you? Moving on to knowledge, we then give information on hypertension in small chunks and check the patient's understanding as we go along. We then explore any emotions the patient may have. We should display empathy to the situation. You could say something like, How do you feel about what I've told you today? You may find that some patients are quite shocked and upset about being diagnosed with high blood pressure. Finally, the last stage of spikes is strategy and summary. Here we may want to check the patient's understanding by asking them to summarise back the key points that you've explained. You then negotiate an appropriate treatment plan and arrange any follow-up. I hope this shows how spikes can be used outside of breaking bad news situations and it's a very useful tool to help you structure your consultations when explaining and giving information to patients. If you enjoyed this video, check out the Geeky Medics collection of over 500 OSCE stations and put your OSCE skills to the test. You can practice with friends, create your own study group, or team up with another member of the Geeky Medics community with our OSCE Match feature. Sign up today to access our selection of free OSCE stations. If you have any suggestions for improvements or future topics to cover, make sure to let us know in the comments. If you haven't already, please subscribe to be the first to know when we release new videos.